up your voices and begin to call on the God of the universe in this place. You need breakthrough tonight. Let your praise be the breakthrough. As I was preparing for tonight, as we're in a series on Joseph's life, I, I got stuck on a few scriptures and I want to read those to you because it ministered to me. And it took me back to a season of my life where I was alone, I was broken, I was empty and I was dry. It says there in Genesis chapter 37 and verse 18, if you got your Bibles, if not, it's going to be on the screen behind me. It says, they saw him from afar, talking about Joseph, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, here comes the dreamer. Come now, let us kill him. Throw him into one of, our, of the pits. Then they will say that the fierce animals has devoured him, and we will see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he rescued him out of the hands, saying, let us not take his life. And Reuben said to them, shed no blood, throw him into the pit here and in the wilderness. Do not lay a hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hands to restore him to his father. In verse 33 and, 20, and 24, we're going to hang out here tonight. It says, when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the robe of many colors that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. And the pit was empty, and there was no water there. Have you ever came to a place in, in your walk with Jesus, and you felt like that you're alone, and you're dry, and you're empty? That you felt like that you're in a pit of life, that all hell is against you, and all you can do is just come to the place and it takes all that you have just to stand up in the midst of that season and circumstance. And tonight I want to just talk about that the pit is empty. Because every one of us has a pit in our life. We, every one of us has a tank in our life. And tonight I want to ask you, is your tank full? Is your tank full? It says they, they stripped him of his robe and they threw him into the pit. And tonight I go back to an old worship song. When the music fades and all is stripped away. Bobby, would you lead us in this song tonight? And right there where you are, here and at home, would you join us tonight? And just allow everything to be stripped away from your life and come back to the place of just you and Jesus. When the music all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's worth that will bless your heart yes God so I'll bring you more than a song for a song in this is not what you have required As you search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart So I'm coming back to the heart of I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made When it's all about you It's all about you, back. Jesus Cause 
I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all I'm sorry, See, our lives is like a car. We come to services like this and we fill up, but then we, as soon as we leave here, we begin to burn the fuel that's in our tank. And when life happens and the simplest of things can all of a sudden throw us into a pit, into a trap. That life begins to happen and it can start to fill your tank. And as I was thinking about this and him being thrown into a pit, not just any pit, a pit that was empty. I just begin to think, how many of us go through daily life running on fumes? And tonight, I want to just share with you and just be vulnerable with you tonight. That we don't have to live on fumes. We don't have to keep going through the motions. We don't have to keep going through life on fumes when we have the promise of the Holy Spirit. And here's the thing about services like this. We can get excited emotionally. We can get excited about all these things, but I don't want to run on emotion. I want to run on the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to see a church that is led and is, and is, and is controlled, that they live and they drive under the influence of the Holy Spirit in their everyday life. And so tonight, if you're ready for the Holy Spirit to come and do something in your life tonight, can you give the Lord a hand clap offering of praise? Thank you, worship team. title tonight's message, The Pit is Empty, But I Don't Have to Remain Empty. The pit is empty, but I don't have to remain empty. And so tonight, we're just going to have fun a little bit. I was telling Pastor Rick earlier, I'm going to go a little old school, the the way I grew up in church, and just preach. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down, that the Holy Spirit is a present participant in your life's reality. That the Holy Spirit is a present participant in your everyday life. I was sharing about just a car and its gas tank. I remember when I was a teenager and I started driving a long time ago, that I went to the gas station. It was probably one of the first times that I was able to drive by myself. And I went to the gas station. I was so excited because I had money in my pocket. And I knew that, that I had enough money to fill up my gas tank because it was going to be $11.27. It was 54 cents a gallon in 1996. That was the second tank. The first tank was 69 and price dropped. But it was 54 cents a gallon. I remember it like it was yesterday. But it was a long, long time ago. It was last century. But I, I pulled up to the gas tank that, that, that day, and I, and I got excited, and, and I knew I had to get gas, but I ran inside because I was going to get a, a soda, and I was going to get a Snickers bar, and I grabbed my, my Dr. Pepper, and I grabbed a Snickers bar, and I ran back out to the car. I hopped in the car, and I put the key in ignition, and I just drove away as I was eating my Snickers bar and drinking my Dr. Pepper. And I got down the road, and something caught my lot, my, my, uh, my attention on the dashboard. It was my... Fuel light. (laughs) But it got me thinking about this. How many times do we come to the filling station but we leave empty? How many times do we come to services and and we're here and have a great experience and the atmosphere here, the Holy Spirit's all around us, but we live 
we leave empty. Just like the car needed fuel for his everyday life to go one more mile, you as a believer, we need to be full of the Holy Spirit, leading, guiding, directing us through life's journeys. It's an ongoing filling up. You can't just fill your car up one time and, and that's it. No, you have to fill it up. You ride with me, I fill up twice a week. And it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. And so I have a question for us tonight, and it's this. How easily is the Holy Spirit's influence on our lives, and is it visible to others around us? How easily do we understand the, the, the influence of the Holy Spirit personally, but also do those around us understand and, and see the, the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit's influence in our everyday life? There's a couple of things that I want to, to talk to you tonight. One is... This, just because you're empty doesn't mean you have to stay empty. Hallelujah. And so if we're not going to stay empty, there's things that's got to fill the tank, our, our tank. And, and, and I believe the number one thing that needs to fill our tank is the Holy Spirit himself. Amen. The Holy Spirit draws us to the Lord. It brings fresh revelation to, of, of God. It leads, guides, and directs us. It teaches us. And so the Holy Spirit has to be in our life. Jesus talks about it this way in Luke chapter 4 and, was, and verse 1. And Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. And he returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Not only was he filled, but he was led by it. So point one is this. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is to release control of yourself to him. To be filled of the Holy Spirit is to, be, is to release control to him. It says he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And for 40 days, being tempted by the, by the devil, he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. Jesus here was being led by the Spirit into the place where he would be tempted by the enemy. Not every pit of your life let me say it this way. Every pit in your life doesn't have to be a pity party. It can be turned into a praise party. Every pit in your life doesn't have to be something that you just endure. It can be something that you learn from and you move on from. Just like Joseph, the pit led him to the palace. In the next pit, it wasn't a pit. It was a prison. But the prison led him to the palace again. God's not going to just allow things to happen in your life. He wants to turn it around for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. You remember this morning we talked about that in, at the end of Joseph's life he, when he saw his brothers, he said, what you did to me, you meant for my evil, but God used it for your good. And so the enemy may have you in a pit in this season, but that's not your destination. That's not your final destination. Amen. And so we must release control of ourselves to him. The second one is this, to be filled with the Spirit. It's not just to release control of ourselves to him, but it's to be awake and not sleepwalking through our calling to live like Christ. To live like Christ. Tonight, I'm here to, t to tell some of you that it's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to start living out your calling and start to live it out like Christ in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection or sympathy, complete my joy by being the same mind, having the same love, and being full accord in one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. What is this? It's fulfilling the call like Christ. What? He didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. God, Christ Jesus, he was selfless. And we must be just like him. And it continues on in Philippians 2, verse 4. It says, let each of you not only look to his own interests, but also the interests of others. If you're going to be filled with the Spirit, not only do you release control to, control to, to, the, to, to the Spirit, but through the empowerment of the Spirit, you put others first. No greater love than this, the one that was laid down his own life for his 
brother. And so it continues, and it gives and it gives us some practical things here in Philippians chapter two. And it says, "Having this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself." If you're going to make room for the Holy Spirit in your life, you may have to go to a pit. You may have to find yourself in isolation. You may have to find, your, find yourself there in order to empty yourself out so that he can fill himself, your, you with himself. There's an emptying that must happen in this. And by emptying himself, in verse 7, it says, by taking the form of a servant. It's not natural in our culture to naturally serve someone else. But I believe that it is a, 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 a character of someone who is led and filled with the Holy Spirit that they're not expecting people to serve them, but they are always there to serve others. Yeah. That's the reason why we preach, find your next step. Because we are the body and all of us together make up the body of Christ. But here's the great thing, there's no one the head except Jesus Christ himself. So we all fall under his authority. And we need the Holy Spirit to fill us up so that we can just go and be a servant like Christ. Being born in the likeness of man and being found in human form, he humbled himself. Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. What did Jesus tell us to do? To pick up our cross and follow him daily. I want you to understand this tonight. That the pit may be empty, though. Your holding tank may be empty tonight, but you don't have to leave here empty. I'm thankful that Jesus loves us enough that he says, come just as you are, but he doesn't leave us there. He says, come just as you are to me, but when you leave, you leave a new creation. The old has passed away and all things are made new. We must make room for the Holy Spirit in our life. And in making room for the Holy Spirit is this, that the filling of the Spirit is an ongoing thing, an ongoing relationship with him that's daily. How do we do it? We prioritize the word of God in our life. It's not something, oh man, it's the end of the day, I'm about to go to bed, and that's when I'm gonna read the word. No, it's priority. His word, his voice is number one, and everybody, everything else falls behind it. How do, we, how do we prioritize this? How do we make room? We don't just sing a song of worship. We live a life of worship. Amen. Romans 12, chapter, uh, chapter 12, verse 1, 2 says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, I urge you to submit yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, for this is your spiritual act of worship. And the next one is this. We have to have the mindset, or I like to say, we have to have the heart set of gratitude throughout our day. Gratitude, who's thankful tonight for what Jesus has done in your life? Who's thankful tonight what the Holy Spirit's already done in your life tonight? But can I tell you, he's not done. He's not done, he's here to change us from glory to glory. We must make room in our lives, in our hearts, in our tank for the Holy Spirit. Not only do we need to make room for the Holy Spirit, but we also need to pray for God's discerning and leading our everyday life. He says, that word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. God wants believers to learn how to operate and to live under the influence that dominates their everyday life. I, do it, I did a ride along just a couple of weeks ago with one of, a, one of the deputies that goes to our Middleburg campus. He's a and we were driving, and all of a sudden, he said, hey, is there a guy driving that car? I said, yeah. He said, okay. And he backs up. He see, runs the tag, and he says, okay, we, we pulled him over, and they were high and drunk and all of that. And after that stop there, I told him a story about one of my former pastors and his wife who got pulled, pulled over after a Sunday night service just like this. And, and, and my pastor was following, her, following behind his wife, and the deputy came up, pulled her over, and all of a sudden, he, she, she, he walks up there and says, ma'am, do you know why I pulled you over? She said, no. He said, you were swerving all over the road. Have you been drinking? 
And she said, yes. He said, what have you been drinking? I've been drinking the new wine. You want some? I have it for you. And that night on the side of the road, she got pulled over for driving under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's a true story. And she was able to lead that, to that cop to the Lord and pray for him right there on the side of the road. Can I tell you, when we are under the influence of the Holy Spirit, God would give us God div uh, uh, divine um, appointments that we're able to share the gospel with people. And we're going to see lives transformed. God wants us to be there. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. I'm giving you a lot of scriptures. You should be writing them down. If not, you can go back and listen to this in the morning when you get up to do your, um, your quiet time with the Lord. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. And so, from that day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. What does the scripture say? If you lack wisdom, ask. Tonight, some of us need to ask for wisdom. In verse 10, it says, So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, bearing fruit in every, say every, every. good work. God hasn't called us just to come in and hear the gospel get saved and fill a fill of pew. No, he's called us to be fruitful. Just like we talked about this morning, those, those that bear fruit, he will prune those so they can, they can bear what? Much more fruit. God wants you to, be, to bear more fruit, church. Bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God and being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. Some of us, when we get into the pit, I know for me, when I get into those dry seasons and those pits of life and life is happening, sometimes I don't feel like just getting up and getting into the Word. Can I just be honest tonight? But I do it anyway. Because I've learned that I can't base what I do on how I feel. I can't base my actions on how I feel in the moment because your feelings will always let you down. But I draw strength in who I know. Did you catch that tonight? I draw strength in who I know. I know who, in who my hope it comes from. I know that where my strength comes from. My strength doesn't come from me exercising, doing all of that. My spiritual No, my strength comes from this. My strength comes from the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. Tonight, I think that some people in here just needs the joy of the Holy Ghost in their life tonight. You're so full of bitterness and resentment and hurt and pain, but I'm here to tell you tonight that you need to make room. You need to lay those things at the altar tonight, and you need to make room for the joy of the Holy Ghost in your life. We find in Ephesians chapter 5, it talks about being filled with the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15, it says, look carefully then how you walk. Look carefully then how you walk. Have you ever noticed those that are filled with the Holy Spirit walk differently than those that don't? They walk differently. They hold their head differently. They put their shoulders back differently. They see things differently. Because they don't operate in the natural but they trust in the Holy Spirit to give them discernment through the supernatural. It says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time. Can I tell you, the day is drawing near and he's coming back. Yes, sir. Amen. That should get us excited in this place tonight. But here's the thing about it. All right, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Here's the thing about it is this. It should get us excited, but it also should get us up moving. Because the Lord is coming back soon, but there's many that we call family that if he comes back today, that he will, they will not be with him in eternity. We need to, we need to use the... Our time wisely because the days are evil. It says, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand that the will of, what the will of 
of God is. And how do we do that? We don't do it by getting drunk with wine, for that's debauchery. But we do it by being filled with the Holy Spirit. By being filled with the Holy Spirit. The worship team joins me right now. I'm gonna ask Kayla to go ahead and bring that table out tonight because all of us, our tank is different. The tank of our life is different. The things that motivate us and gets us going is different. And tonight, just like I was talking about earlier, how I went to the gas station and I pulled up to the gas station there and parked, got out, went, got my Dr. Pepper and Snicker bar, but I got back in and drove off without filling up. There's some of us that came in just like this cup tonight. It's a pretty nice cup. I got a great deal on it. It was $1.25 at Dollar General right down the road. And if somebody wants to invest, I'll sell it to you for five bucks after service. But so many of us are just like this cup. We come into a service, and this water represents the Holy Spirit. He's been moving in here tonight. He's been, I was sitting there, and I couldn't raise my hand on some of the songs because of what God was just speaking to me. And we come, and we are here, and we come, and we sit in the midst, and the Spirit is all around us. The Spirit is all around us. Then church service is over and we leave the same way that we came in. We may have a little bit of the spirit on the outside, but we're still empty on the inside. Are we come and we get some of the spirit and it starts going and it's phenomenal here. But then we start finding ourselves going through life and how many know it's just like a car that as we go that if we don't refill, we start getting empty and empty and empty. And we find ourselves coming back to Wednesday night. If you don't come for Wednesday night prayer and Bible study, shame, 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 you should be here. We find ourselves coming back to the service. Can I tell you, that's not how God's designed us to be. The scripture says that you church are the temple of the Holy Ghost I don't want to make a big mess I'm going to put this in here tonight see when we come in here what should happen to us is this that we start getting filled up the worship team's leading the word is being preached we sing the song fill me up till I overflow Fill me up till I overflow. And can I tell you, it can't be just a once a week thing. Because the Lord didn't send his only begotten son so that we can have once a week encounters with him. The veil wasn't torn from the top to the bottom so that you can just have one encounter with him. No, he, he did that so that we could be continually filled up. We can be continually in relationship with him. And here's the great thing. The water may run out of this picture, but can I tell you, the Holy Spirit never runs out. You so see, we need to be to a place that it says, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. That it comes to a place that the Holy Spirit is so influencing our lives that people around us can't tell what it is for Eddie to be in the, in the, in the, in the flesh because I'm, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit and, I, and I'm, my, I came in empty, but I'm leaving full to the overflow. And tonight you may have come in here with all kinds of things in your life, but I'm here to tell you, if you will make room for the Holy Spirit and allow him to come in, he can bring healing to your life. He can bring breakthrough to your life. Pastor, what are you saying? I came in here weak. Can I tell you, the Bible says that 
when he comes, you will be endured with power. Who needs power tonight? John 15, 4 says, abide in me, in me and you. See, when your spirit man is infused by the Holy Spirit and based on the word of God, it infuses your soul. Abide means this, it means intimacy. I never want to come to church and it becomes just a, a routine thing that I do. I never want to wake up in the morning and open the Word and it's just something that I do. I'm, I'm always looking, God, what is it that you want to do in me today? What is it that you want to do in my wife? How do you want to use Tinley? How do you want to use Caden? Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, today that they would grow in their personal relationship with you. See, the pit is not always something to trap you. As we saw with Joseph's life. See, Joseph, Jacob told him to go to, to Shechem to look for his brothers. And if you get into the, the Hebrew there, Shechem was a place of promise. It was, it was the location where Abraham stopped at the tree of, of Moriah and received God's promise of the land. See, it was a place of commitment. It's where the Israelites were reminded of God's covenantal relationship to them, which he first made through Abraham. But it's also a place of praise. Abram built an altar there. But they weren't there anymore. They were down in Dothan. And when you look at Dothan, it, that's the place where God opened the eyes of Elijah, the servant, so that he could see the, the horses and chariots of fire surrounding them. But if you look at Dothan, it, it, talks, it, it, it means two, two, two pits, two wells. One was dry, one wasn't. In Dothan, that's where Elijah prayed, open the eyes, Lord, so that he may see. I'm talking about the king of Aram. And the Lord opened and he opened the, eye, the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Joseph didn't stay in the pit. As we talked about this morning, Judah, which means praise. He looked and he saw people coming out of Gilead. And if you look at that there, it comes from two different Hebrew words. Gal, which means heap or mound. And ed, which means witness or testimony. Can I tell you? When you're full of the Holy Spirit, you don't focus in the pit anymore. You begin to look from where your help comes from. It's a heap of stones. Or I like another translation there. It says it's a heap of testimony. The pit that you may find yourself in here is just to be part of your testimony, not to your final destination. If everyone would stand all across this place tonight. Maybe you walked in here and there's all kind of things in your life. Can I tell you, I want to encourage you tonight, make room for the Spirit of God in your life. How do you do that, Pastor? You come and lay it all at His feet. The Scripture says that He is faithful to forgive. We just got to repent. He's faithful to forgive. We just need to repent. Maybe you're here tonight. You say, Pastor, you don't understand my life story. But tonight, I need, I need this. That's what you're talking about. I need hope in my life. Can I tell you, there's only one place for hope, and his name's Jesus Christ. With every head bowed and every eye closed in this place and online tonight. If you need to surrender your life to Jesus, give, release control unto him. Would you just lift your hand in this place tonight? See your hands. See your hands. 
Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I've already surrendered my life to Jesus, but I need to make room for the Holy Spirit in my, in my life. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do in just a moment. They're going, to, they're going to lead us in a worship song. I want you to get out of your seat and come to the altars. We're going to pray for you. That you would have a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit tonight. As they begin to play right now, just begin to make your way down tonight. Make your way down here tonight. Because I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to pour afresh and anew in your life. Father, I thank you tonight that you, you are faithful to forgive. I thank you tonight, Holy Spirit. Just like in the upper room, they were gathered together in one place and you came and you moved in their life. I pray that tonight as people come to these altars, God. I pray for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit in their life. They may have come in here empty, but they don't have to leave here empty. Those online tonight, they may be there in their home empty, but I pray right now, let there be a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit in their life. Fill them up, God, to the overflow tonight. We surrender all to you tonight. In Jesus' name, let us worship together.